So we didn't have back in 2002 that, that, that this, the Chinese are really going to have to sort of form a wall behind the North Koreans because if we keep pushing and there's no wall behind them, then it doesn't work. And it, it really sounds like we're back there again in terms of, of, of leverage. We can't just do it all by ourselves. So I, my question is to, to both of you, what's your sense of, of the role of U.S.-China relationship and, and what would be the expectations of each of your candidates uh, uh, for, for what China's really going to need to do uh, 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 over the next few months. Thanks. Thank you for that very succinct question. <laughs> That's as short as I ever get. Yeah, I <laughs> um, so, we can't outsource the Korean problem to Beijing. Uh, we have to have a U.S. leadership. That said, the reality on the Korean Peninsula is that China uh, is an indispensable partner in any solution because they hold what little economic leverage remains uh, over the regime is largely held by China. Um, beyond that, uh, uh, it's hard to imagine a solution on the peninsula uh, uh, without China's active involvement. So uh, I think Senator McCain has been exactly right uh, in saying that we need to go to Beijing and, and ask for more. Uh, we need China to, to play a uh, a more dynamic role, not just hosting the six-party talks, but helping to bring them to fruition. Uh, but that's not a substitute for American leadership. Um, uh, and I'm a little surprised still that, you know, the Prime Minister of Japan can meet twice with Kim Jong-il and not convey any legitimacy upon him. This is our, our treaty ally, our democratic uh, uh, partner in the, in the Pacific. Uh, that our South Korean uh, brothers and sisters, uh, their president, can meet twice uh, with Kim Jong-il and, and not convey any legitimacy upon uh, the, the North Korean government. I wasn't aware that the United States uh, president, you know, denying uh, uh, forever the opportunity to meet with a foreign leader uh, was something that would deny forever that leader foreign legitimacy. Uh, Kim Jong-il has met with Putin. He's met with uh, Jiang Zemin. Uh, he's met with Hu Jintao. Um, uh, it would be nice to think uh, uh, that, uh, that we had that authority, uh, but I don't believe we do. You don't give away a presidential summit for nothing. You don't go meet with Kim Jong-il and get nothing in return. And the reason that Clinton's advisors advised him against going in, in, a, in uh, December of uh, 2000 was not because of the fact that it would convey legitimacy. It was because of the concern that he wouldn't get much for the visit. Uh, if, if there had been a, an assurance of some real tangible uh, progress on missiles and on denuclearization, he would have gone. But his advisors were exactly right to tell him, no, sorry, boss, it's not nailed down. It's too big a risk. Um, and it's Republicans. It's not just Democrats. It's Republicans like Jim Leach, former chairman of the East Asia Subcommittee of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, who has endorsed Barack Obama. Republicans like Donald Gray, uh, or as I like to call him, Don the Ambassador. Uh, uh, who, who, have, who have endorsed Barack Obama, uh, former U.S. ambassador to South Korea. And the, the reason, the principal reason they have done so is because of this issue of the need to engage directly uh, in diplomacy with North Korea. Um, I'll answer two. Uh, it, it may be that one of the philosophical differences between Senators McCain and Obama is that uh, Senator McCain, as much as he admires and as much emphasis as he places on our alliance with Japan, with Korea and so forth, uh, Senator McCain does not think the U.S. is just any other country um, and thinks that there's an important difference uh, in what the United States and what the American president does. Um, and, um, you know, uh, I think that's... Uh, a belief the American people have as well, that there's something exceptional about the United States in terms of our influence uh, and our responsibility. And, uh, and that is embodied nowhere more than in the office of the President of the United States. Um, now, on the question of China, Chris, um, I think, uh, you, know, I, I, uh, you know, I was in five years of these talks, and the, and the, the, uh, the evolution of China's position has been remarkable. When, when Secretary Powell first asked uh, Jiang Zemin to help with the six-party talks, he said, this is a U.S.-China bilateral problem. We're not involved. Um, and then China, uh, after the nuclear test uh, in October 2006, you know, the Chinese ambassador to the U.N., Ambassador Wang, came out before John Bolton calling for sanctions in public. So, uh, and, you know, that was not just overnight. It was a steady... Um, 
uh, uh, you know, the evolution in their position and their policy in a very positive direction for Asia and for U.S.-China relations. But um, I think there's a danger in making China feel too comfortable on the North Korea problem, and they're a little bit too comfortable right now. Um, I recently saw a, a, a very senior Chinese official uh, in Beijing, actually it was about six months ago, and uh, I asked what we're going to do about North Korea, and he said, you know, we have to be patient. It took us 40 years to solve the Middle East peace problem. I didn't know what to say, um, but this was someone right at the center of the whole thing, and th there was an urgency to China's attitude about this after the nuclear test. And in public fora, Frank and I both heard Chinese scholars quite close to the government say it's time for regime change, you know. Um, so we, I think we've, the Chinese have become too comfortable. And part of the reason is that, that they um, worry about North Korea's nuclear weapons, but they also don't want us to, you know, uh, take action on our own and, uh, or with our allies. And so uh, that's why it's very important um, that we make it clear that there have to be consequences, that we move in the UN Security Council uh, when it's appropriate, that we use trilateral meetings with Japan and Korea, because um, we don't want our Chinese friends to be too comfortable. Um, uh, because when they're comfortable, they're not going to move on this issue. They've been helpful. They can be more helpful. But, 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 but left on their own, um, often their default position, because it's so hard for China, <laughs> is to do nothing. All right. Let's uh, take uh, two more questions. Uh, over here, please. Thank you. This question is for the uh, How has Senator Obama factored in uh, the Korean government's very active uh, seeking of other FTAs with other trading partners, especially EU, um, and also the develop or the current efforts for a FTA for ASEAN or ASEAN plus three or ASEAN plus six that would leave the U.S. out. Um, and okay. so how has that factored in Senator Obama's current position on the course FTA? And, how, and also the fact that the uh, Korean government puts this as one of their top priorities on the U.S.-Korea alliance. And how will Senator Obama, should he be elected, uh, deal with these developments, particularly the fact that the current Korean government does put a top priority on course? Okay. Thank you. Again, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but I, I like to stay within my, my comfort zone of expertise. Um, I would be happy to get you an answer to your question uh, from those uh, in the Obama campaign who have focused on international trade and on the U.S.-Korea trade picture. So if you come up to me after the meeting, I'll be happy to uh, take your name and, and get you a response. But I, I don't know the answer. Okay. Uh, one last question, all the way in the back, please. Um, just a general question on North Korea for each of the candidates. If they got into office, what would be their first action or step on North Korea? And how a high priority is